Whenever you hear about the inventors of powered flight, it's always the Wright brothers. Orville this, Wilbur that. Well, that's probably because Igor doesn't exactly roll off the tongue in the same way. But Igor Sikorsky also changed aviation when he built this, the first fully functioning helicopter. It might not look sleek or aerodynamic, but the austere design of this helicopter masks its huge significance in aviation history. This helicopter, known as a Sikorsky VS-300, is the first successful single rotor helicopter in 1943. Immediately after this flight on the lawn of the Henry Ford in Dearborn, Michigan, the helicopter touched down and was moved inside the museum to assume its place in history. I caught up with Matt Anderson, Curator of Transportation, to find out more about the helicopter and what inspired the man who invented it. Is this the first helicopter? This is the first helicopter developed in the United States. There have been previous experiments in Germany and France, but those were multi-rotor aircraft instead of the single rotor like Sikorsky settled on. Okay, so those had a, a bunch of propellers. Exactly right. All right, is this the first helicopter that really worked? It's the first one that, that worked in, in the practical sense that we understand the helicopter today, and it was the pattern for the vast majority of helicopters that are still built. So this one set the pace. Absolutely. Built in 1939, the Sikorsky weighed about 1,300 pounds, was nearly 28 feet long, and had a 50 horsepower engine. With a welded steel tube fuselage and a fabric covering, the helicopter could fly about 60 miles per hour and was built for one person only. The cockpit offered little room for movement, and as you can see, there were hardly any controls or gauges. But that was all that was needed for inventor and pilot Igor Sikorsky. Born and raised in Russia, Igor Sikorsky would display extraordinary passion for aviation, along with uncommon patience and determination. His aviation pursuits began in Russia and stayed with Sikorsky when he moved to the United States in the year 1919. He experimented with the helicopter in about 1909, 1910, and just found out the technology wasn't quite there yet. So he moved on to fixed wing aircraft, and about 30 years later, the late 1930s, he comes back to the helicopter and find success. And what do you think kept him going? I mean, to hold on to a dream for 30 years, to nurture it? I, I think that's uh, part of the spark that makes a great innovator, you know, to hold on to a dream and to just not give up. It's not a situation where he was working kind of nonstop. He realized that he couldn't quite build the helicopter with the technology they had in 1910, so he had the good sense to wait until things could catch up. That's called stick to itiveness Absolutely. But every spark of genius has a source of inspiration. For the young Igor Sikorsky, it was science fiction novels. As a young boy, he grew up interested in the writings of Jules Verne, as well as the, some of the designs of Leonardo da Vinci, and decided that aviation would be his life work. So did he actually read about a helicopter in Jules Verne? He, he did. He read about aircraft that could sort of take off from nowhere, land on a single spot, and it, it really inspired him and, and kind of put the dream in him that would carry him on to this. Boy, it's, it's funny to think that a science fiction writer played a big role in this. He absolutely did, yes. I guess someone had to dream it first before it could happen. That's right, you have to dream it before you can do it. And he did it, capturing the attention of the world, including fellow innovator Henry Ford. Sikorsky and Ford had a mutual friend in Charles Lindbergh, known of course for making the first solo flight across the Atlantic Ocean. It was Lindbergh who introduced Sikorsky and Ford, ultimately leading to the Sikorsky being enshrined here forever. I think Ford would have been naturally attracted to Sikorsky as an innovator. Ford himself had had trouble failing with automobile companies before he finally hit Ford Motor Company. So I think he would have respected that kind of perseverance and, and probably got along with Sikorsky very well. In the pantheon of inventors, where does Igor Sikorsky sit? His name is almost synonymous with the helicopter. So I think Sikorsky is one of the real giants of the aviation industry, no question. I kind of want to kick the wheels right now to see what shape it's in, but this is a museum. Yeah, I'd rather you didn't.